Hello students, good morning from Language Land, where we travel virtually and explore languages across the world. Every language will vary in the teeniest, tiniest possible way. All languages will serve the same function to aid communication, but this function is demonstrated or displayed in various ways. In today's episode, we will join some friends from another part of the world. Come on, let's go to the Caribbean. Officially, there are six languages spoken in the Caribbean. However, we will be focusing on Caribbean Standard English. Caribbean Standard English is a general term for the many varieties of the English language used in the Caribbean's archipelago and on the Caribbean coast of their Central American territories. Each territory, however, has their own Creole language. In today's episode, we will be joined by students from Jamaica and Trinidad to examine their individual Creole languages and to see how they are similar or different. We will then compare these languages to English. Let's go. Welcome again, everyone, to Language Land. I am Monique Norville from the island of Trinidad and Tobago. And joining me today, I have two colleagues, Jamie Lee Broom and Judah Williams, also from the island of Trinidad and Tobago. And lastly, to add some flavor to this Trini mix, we have Sabrina Brown. Today, we will be answering three questions on preverbial TME tense. How tense compares to each other in Trinidadian, Tobagonian Creole and Jamaican Creole. How tense in these Creoles compared to Caribbean Standard English and their usefulness to Cape Communication Studies. We are here today to speak to you about tense. What is tense? This similarity of time is a common notion expressed within the morphology and syntax of a language. Morphology refers to the formation and structuring of these words and their relationship to other words, and syntax refers to the arrangement of these words put together to form well-sounding sentences. Tense places an event on a timeline relevant to the time of speech, whether it be past, present, or future. In some languages, there are tense distinctions which can be systematically calibrated to reference respect to the moment of speaking. We have near past, distant past, near future, and distant future. Like English, Creoles have their own distinctive way of marking tense that may seem irregular and incorrect to non-Creole speakers. So, tense is used to express time. The time an event has occurred, will occur, and is occurring, past, present, and future. It has been stated that Creole in general has a set of preverbal markers which fall into three categories. Anterior tense, which is an action that has been completed before starting something new. We have eralis tense, which is an action that has occurred unbeknownst to the speaker. And then we have non-punctual tense. Like Standard English, Creole has its specific tense marker, which is unique to each Creole community, which in this case, we will be speaking about Jamaican and Trinidadian vernacular. Many Creole speakers are unaware that their variety of language is quite structural and based on specific rules and attributes, rather than being random and just a case of poor grammatical and English speaking skills, which they have been conditioned to believe all this time. Using a small demonstration, we will highlight how tense compares to each other in Jamaican Creole and Trinidadian Creole to their English lexifier through an accent challenge. Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel and today we are going to have some fun. But before I introduce what we are going to do today, I would like to welcome my guests from Jamaica, Sabrina, we have Sabrina, and from Trinidad, we have Judah. Who are going? What is this scene earlier? Okay, guys. So hi. And today's segment we are going to we are going to be doing the battle of the territories. Okay. So what that is, 
is that each of my guests today, you, as you can tell, they have very heavy accents in their native tongue. So I thought, why not do a fun little accent challenge and compare to the different languages? The, and compare the different languages, basically. The languages we are going to look at today is Jamaican and Trinidadian Creole, as well as Standard English, which is represented by each participant respectfully. I will be representing for Standard English. Um, Judah will be representing for Trinidadian Creole and Sabrina Jamaican Creole. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Before we get into this, there's a twist. We are going to focus on tense markers, right? So the three uh, main tense markers that we are going to look at today is present tense, future tense, and continuous habitual tense, right? So what is going to take place is that I am going to present you guys with a sentence and you, will gu you guys will repeat it and translate it in the way you would in your respectful language, okay? So are you ready to get started? Yeah. All right. The first sentence you'll be looking at today is, I went to the party yesterday. Well, we in Trinidad say, I did go to the party yesterday. Interesting. In Jamaica, you would say, Midi got a party yesterday. Very cool. Moving on to the next sentence. Um, the next sentence is, I had to paint the entire house on my own. How would you say that, Judah? I did paint the whole house by myself. I did have to paint the whole house by myself. Okay. Moving on to the third sentence. Um, the other sentence is, there was a storm last October. How would you say that, Judah? It had a storm October gone. We did get one storm in October, or you can say it rained a storm last October, or it rained a storm in October, or okay. it rained a storm last year, October. So we can use okay. rain or did get one. Okay, you all have a variety of ways on how you say that, which is very interesting. Okay, so let's, let's kind of recap on this part where we did the past tense. Um, some, some stuff that I, I noticed from each of each one of yours, your, you guys' languages is that the past and marker words were, were like been, been, when, and did. Um, this, the similarity of those between both creoles are seen in the past and marker did. Your both said that. And in rare occasions, Jamaicans would say when. In standard English, the past and marker is typically ED, which is that, that was the, the main difference between the Creoles and the standard English. So we're moving on to future tense now. Okay, so I'm going to give you some sentences constructed in the future tense and you, you guys will translate it how you would in your language. So the first sentence is, we will fry the chicken on Sunday. We go fry chicken Sunday. May I go fry chicken Sunday? Okay. The next sentence is, the pastor will pray for the congregation within the next hour. The pastor will pray for the congregation in an hour time. We'll say the pastor, I go pray for the congregation in our hour. Okay. That's, that's good. Moving on to the final um, sentence for future tense is my sister is getting married in June. Well, we will say my sister going and get married in June. Okay. In Jamaica, we would say my sister I go get married in a June. Oh, okay. Okay, so what I noticed from this was the past tense marker, the sorry, the future tense marker in in the Creole and the both Creoles are go or ago. The similarities observed between both Creoles are seen with the future tense marker go in Jamaican Creole. The copula a is also used in addition to go. So you're, you would say ago, um, Sabrina and Judah would say go. So we can say go or we can say ago. Me go oh. do this or me ago do this. 
Okay, so that, that is where it's, sim it's similar and different at the same time because there's a variation with the Jamaican Creole. Okay, in Southern English, um, we, in the Standard English, it is represented as will and or shall. So that is something different between the two um, languages, three languages. Okay, so the other heading we're going to look at is continuous habitual tense. And the first sentence I have for this part is, at seven, I'm, leave, I'm having breakfast. And Trinidad, we go say, I just eat breakfast around seven. Okay, I can say at seven, me and breakfast, or at seven, me and breakfast. So you can use a uh, give or take. It depends on yes, how you're speaking, or where you're from. Yes, I noticed that uh, comes in a lot with the Jamaican Creole language. Moving on to the, the next sentence, we are going to look at you are smoking too much. How would well, you guys say that? You don't smoke too much. We can say you are smoke too much, or you can say ya yeah, smoke too much. Ya yeah is basically you and ah. So ya, yeah, you are, you are okay. smoke too much. So the blending of okay. Understood. Moving on. The last sentence for continuous habitual tense is she swims every morning. How would you guys say that? Well, I would say she does swim every morning. Okay, and we can say she has swim a morning time. So it's an habit that she does. So she swim a morning time. Oh, okay, okay. Noted. So what I noticed is that the continuous habit of tense masters typically used in the Creole languages are, are others. This tense shows no similarity in both Creoles because it's quite different here. In Jamaican Creole, the continuous is also marked with a copula A. In Trinidadian Creole, the continuous tense is marked with does. Okay? In Southern English, the continuous habitual tense is represented with ing. We see where A is used similarly for both Trinidadian and Jamaican Creoles. However, the function differs. So that was it today for our accent challenge. I hope you guys had fun. I know I did. It was interesting to see the differences between the um, how we speak in the Caribbean, me with the, the Caribbean standardized English. And uh, so teacher's background, we know that Creoles, like any other official languages, have their rules and their structures. Some Creoles mirror fairly close to the super strict languages, which are the language that they get the majority of their lexicon from. So what may sound like English, because a student is using English words, may not be standard English, but a register of Creole. A teacher may correct a student's errors in standard English, when in reality, what the student is saying is actually allowed and it's correct in Creole. Creoles are classified based on their lexifiers their location and structural differences, as well as socio-historical origins and functions. We understand that the teacher has to recognize that there are elements of the structure of grammar in standard English that are not the same as in Creole. And this relates to language awareness and critical thinking on the part of the teacher. And that language varies based on social, economical, and geographical factors. A person in East, for example, may speak differently to someone in South, even within the same country, because Creole has different um, functions and different structural features. Teachers must first be able to distinguish between the different registers of Creole. There are acrolect, being the closest to standard English, mesolect, which is um, where the variety begins to mix, and basilect, which is furthest from standard English. have gathered from this lesson is that it is important to note that the form in Jamaican Creole and Trinidadian and Tobagonian Creole appear similar but their functions are different. There are however noticeable differences in form and function to English. In both Creoles, tense is not expressed by inflected verbs but by tense markers. 
these two creoles rely on their text and this is one of the biggest differences between creoles and their lexifying language english